what are you watching for in the debate tonight? Well, we are going to watch President Trump fight uh, on behalf of the American people tonight. You know, he it's it's really about who you're there for. And President Trump is there to represent the American people. He's there to fight for Rachel Morin and her five children that she's left behind. He's there to fight for Lake and Riley, for Jocelyn Nungare, for, you know, the gentleman our campaign saw over the weekend who came up and said, I'm voting for President Trump because I had to come out of retirement because I can't afford my bills and I can't afford my medications. And part of President Trump's preparation leading up to this debate has been spending time with the American people, being out in battleground states where he is beating Joe Biden in the polls, I might add, but speaking directly to the American people, but also listening to them, listening to their concerns. And he's going to bring those perspectives with him to the debate stage and represent the hopes, the dreams, the wants, needs, and concerns of the American people. And we really feel like because President Trump spends so much time out taking questions from the media, from anyone who asks, spending so much time directly with the American people, that he's really best poised to do that. Uh, we also expect to see Joe Biden attempt to stand, I guess, for 90 minutes on a stage. But the real bar for Joe Biden is going to be, can he stand by his record? Can he stand by his record of creating the worst border crisis in US history? Can he stand by his record of creating record levels of inflation, inflation for the American people? Can he stand by a record that majority of Americans do not find popular, do not feel is benefiting them? And can he explain that record to the American people? What will be the sign of a successful debate tonight? I think a sign of a successful debate will be President Trump, again, representing the wants, needs, hopes, and dreams of the American people. I think there's going to be a lot of people tuning in tonight who walk away saying, wow, President Trump spoke to my problems. President Trump gets it. You know, we just saw last week, for example, President Trump announced a new policy called No Tax on Tips for hospitality workers. You know, many of our hospitality workers make lower wages and those tips are incredibly important and not taxing their tips, which is where really a bulk of their money is coming from, is extremely helpful to helping them afford daily life with inflation as high as it is, but also meet some of their goals, right? And, and be able to have enough money to pursue whatever their American dreams are. So I think we'll look at tonight as a success when President Trump is able to articulate his past record on behalf of the American people. But also, like I said, the American people, I think, will see their cares and concerns reflected back to them through President Trump. We've touched on this a little bit, but what are the big issues you hope will be discussed tonight? Well, we certainly hope that it's the issues that are most important to the American people that are discussed tonight. That would make a lot of sense, right? And we know what those issues are. We know it's What's important to the American people, most important to the American people right now is inflation and the economy and immigration. President Trump is on the right side of those issues. His policies and his ideas align with where the majority of Americans are at on those issues. For example, we saw a new poll from CBS this past week showing that a majority of Americans, 62% of Americans, including a majority of Hispanics, want mass deportations for illegal immigrants. They don't want mass amnesties like the two that Joe Biden has signed in the last month. And President Trump has pledged that on day one, he is going to launch the largest criminal deportation in our country's history to secure our border and uphold the rule of law. And he's going to do it by using our terrific men and women of local law enforcement. Again, on the economy, you know, uh, more voters trust President Trump on the economy than Joe Biden. But that's because when President Trump, who's had an extremely successful career prior to politics as a businessman, I might add, he knew how to run the economy like a businessman. And when President Trump was in office, we saw tax cuts for the American people. We saw the easing of regulations. We saw American energy independence and dominance, what's helped dramatically to bring down the cost of inflation or helps dramatically to bring down inflation. Americans remember what that economy was like under President Trump and they're suffering under President Biden. And that's not me saying that, that's the fact saying that, you know, the facts show that the credit card APR rate in our country is at 22%, that uh, the cost of a bag of chips at the grocery store is $6.19, that the average American's dollar is worth 20% less today than it was five years ago all while people's wages have not been able to outpace inflation. So we're seeing stagflation that is harming the American people, making the American dream less 
you know, affordable and people are looking for hope. And I don't think they're looking at President Biden's record for that. I think they're going to look at President Trump's record for that and his policies, like I mentioned, no tax on tips to help alleviate that economic suffering. This is not the first time the two have debated each other. What can we expect to be different tonight? I think it's a different America. The country is very different than it was for just four years ago. This is the first time in a century, I believe, that the American people have an opportunity to compare two former presidents and their records back to back. The American people are in a very unique position here. And there's a very clear contrast between those two records. As I mentioned, under President Trump, we had the most secure border in U.S. history. We saw peace deals being signed in the Middle East, not war. We were respected on the world stage. Our allies were paying their fair share. Russia, China, Iran, our adversaries were in check. And again, we saw an economy where gas was $1.69, where inflation was at 1.9%, where mortgage payments were below 6%. People could afford a home, afford to spend money on their dreams because they had money left over. Under Joe Biden, we have seen the worst border crisis in US history. We have seen war in the Middle East and in Europe with no end in sight. We are not respected on the world stage. Our allies do not pay their fair share. And we have an economy where frankly, Joe Biden makes Jimmy Carter look like a lightweight. And there's a very clear contrast between those two records. And that's going to be on full display tonight for the American people, you know, to see and compare and, and decide when they ultimately cast their vote later this November. In the last debate, some critics expressed concern that former President Trump interrupted President Biden too much. What is the strategy for tonight? Strategy, I won't get ahead of President Trump. You know, he speaks his mind and he is, like I said, because of the amount of time that he spends speaking directly with the American people, he's best prepared. He's best prepared to do that. But look, President Trump is prepared to tell the truth. And sometimes the truth hurts. Sometimes the truth maybe triggers CNN and Joe Biden. But uh, there's a lot on the line for our country right now. And President Trump understands the stakes. Uh, this is a man who has endured quite a lot since he came down that escalator in 2015 on behalf of the American people. This is a man who had an extremely successful record as president where he stared down our enemies on the world stage and you know, uh, reasserted American dominance on the world stage. So this is, a, this is a president who really understands where the stakes are at for our country. I expect him to tell the truth and to tell it under the best and worst conditions in the debate and, and put, you know, the truth and his record first and foremost. What do you want Wisconsinites specifically to be on the lookout for when they're watching the debate tonight? I hope Wisconsinites see in President Trump what our campaign sees every day, which is that this is a man that deeply loves his country. Um, he has pledged to be a president for all Americans. He wants to govern with common sense. I hope that, you know, like I said, President Trump spends a lot of time out with the American people and the American people that we're fortunate enough to meet um, all day, some of whom are in the great state of Wisconsin, uh, not all of them are doing well. They have real problems and, and real concerns, whether that might be the fact that fentanyl is the leading cause of death um, among Americans 18 to 45, and Joe Biden has allowed 30 tons of that substance to come across our southern border, whether it's that, as I mentioned earlier, a gentleman who had to come out of retirement to afford daily life, um, we know the American people are suffering. And what I'm hoping the people of Wisconsin see tonight is the truth. I hope they see the contrast between two records of two former presidents. And I hope in President Trump's message, which is what we continue to see everywhere we go, I hope that Wisconsinites find hope for their future um, in President's, President Trump's message and record of safety, security, and prosperity for our country. Is there anything else we haven't touched on that you think is important for people to understand about the debate tonight? It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Like I said, we are, we're looking forward to tonight. President Trump said he would debate anytime, anywhere, any place. I would encourage um, your viewers to tune in. It's an important opportunity for your viewers to compare two records of two former presidents and make an informed decision that certainly has an impact on their future and the future of our country.